In our previous lesson, we learnt about the binomial theorem, and we learnt how to expand, for example, something like x plus 2 to the power of 4. We learnt how to use the Pascal's triangle um, and all of that to help us expand this. So if you haven't watched that lesson, just go check that out before you watch this one. So in this lesson, we're going to do something a little bit more specific. Um, what we're going to do is we're not going to go and expand the whole thing. We're only going to look for a certain part. We're not going to go expand every single part, a term. We're just looking for, um, yeah, as I said, I think I've just repeated myself, but we look, you'll see what I mean now with an example. So, for example, here they say determine the coefficient. Now, what is a coefficient? Well, if I have something like 3x squared, the number in the front, that is the coefficient. Okay, so that is a coefficient. Okay, and if you have like negative 7x squared, then the negative 7 is the coefficient. So the coefficient is the number that is in the front of the variable part. Okay, so what they're asking us to do in this next question, I'll show you, it's quite easy. Um, they're asking us to find the coefficient of the n2m4 term. Now, where is the n2m4 term? Well, let's pretend like we were going to expand this like we did in the previous lesson. So this is a 6. So that means we're going to have to go all the way to row 7 in the in the Pascal triangle. All the way to row 7. My goodness, that's actually quite a task. Okay, and then um, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3. Uh, four, six. So obviously, I've, I assume that you watched my previous lesson on the binomial expansion. If you haven't, then this won't make so much sense. So I would, I would um, advise you to go check out that lesson first. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting here and being like, what? What's this guy on? Okay, so there's row seven. Why did we go to row seven if that's a six? Well, remember, in the previous lesson, I showed you that you get things called powers. And this is like um, power zero. And these numbers here is what I'm talking about when I say power. Uh, one, let's actually draw these arrows. This is the second power, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And we're looking for power six. So it's these numbers here that we are going to use, okay, um, up to there. Right, so let's ignore everything else. And so what we did in the previous lesson is we then say one plus six Plus, so at the moment, it's pretty much exactly what we did in the previous lesson, right? Um, okay, I'm going to run out of space because now this is quite a big one. So let's go 1 um, plus 6 over there, 15 over there, uh, 20. Yeah, this looks okay. 15, 6, and let's put a bit more space here. 6 and 1. Okay, then what I said in the previous lesson was you then take this and you take this and you just go put them in brackets, N and M. And you do that for every term. Okay. And then what we do is we take this number, 6, and we put it for the first one. So the first one is the n. So we put a 6. Then we just count down. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then for the, um, for the other one, you count up from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So now they're looking for the n2, m4. So where's n2, m4? Here it is here. And they want to know what is the number in the front. So there it is. It's the number 15. If there were some other numbers, be careful now. Listen up to what I'm saying. If there were other numbers inside here, then they would have combined with that 15. And so your coefficient would have been something different. But these n's and these m's, they're not going to change the 15, okay? So the, the answer for this one, um, the answer for this question is 15. Now, we're going to do quite a lot of examples in this lesson. We've got another four. So we've got this one, we've got this one, and we've got this one. Okay, I said four, but I think that was three, yeah? But it's fine. Three more examples. So let's try this one. So here they want the x3, x3 and the y term um, in this expansion. So, okay, so that's four. So what we do is we need to go down to row five in Pascal's triangle. Okay, if Pascal's triangle and all of this doesn't make sense, then as I said, you need to go watch my previous lesson where we introduce the binomial expansion. Otherwise, none of this is going to make sense to you. Okay, and it's a really, it's, it's easy. But, one, but if you haven't seen it before, it's going to be like, what is going on? Do I even want to do this ever? Do I even want to do maths anymore? So that's power one, power two, power three, and power four. Let's draw arrows to it. Okay, so we are looking for power four. So that's these numbers here. So we're going to take those numbers now and we say one plus four plus six 
plus four plus one. Okay, now what we do is we go ahead and we take this and this, and we put them in brackets. So x and 3y in brackets, x, and you do that for every single term. Okay. Right, and then what you do is you take this number and you always put that number on the first one. So that's four, then you count down, all the way down to zero. And then on the other number, you start at zero and you count up. Like that. Okay, now we've got to think about where would we get an x3 and a y? Well, that would be over here. Um, there would be an x3, and then this would be just a normal y. It doesn't have like a y2 or a y4, it's just an x3, y. So what's the coefficient? Now don't say four. Why not, Kevin? Wasn't it the number in the front? Yes, but look, there's a three over here. Ah, so that four and that three, they're gonna combine. And also be careful for this number. If that number was like a two, then this would have become three to the power of two, which would have been nine. But in this case, three to the power of one is just three, and three times four is 12. So the answer would be 12. That is the coefficient in the front. Now let's do this example. So once, ooh, look at that, seven. So we have to go down to row eight in Pascal's triangle. And one more, my goodness me. Okay, so that's gonna be a two, three, three, uh, four, six, four, uh, five, ten, ten, five. That seems a bit weird. Five, ten, ten, five. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, it's more like there. Okay, and then uh, six, fifteen, twenty, fifteen, and six. And then last one, seven, twenty-one, thirty-five, thirty-five. 21. And then this would be 1 plus 6 is 7, and then there's law 1 over here. Okay, so it's a bit squashed up, but those are the numbers here that we're going to use. 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. Okay, so um, let's quickly go write them down. So 1 plus 7 plus 21. Actually, why don't I just be clever, and why don't I just say um, plus, plus. Okay, that's a bit spaced out. Let's put 35 there. Plus. 35, 21, 7, and 1. Okay. Okay, no, that's not going to work here. Eh? We need more space. Okay, so there I've done the numbers up at the top here, and then we're just going to put little pluses in between them. And then we're just going to put the x4 and the y. So x4 and y, x4 and y. And we're going to do it for all of them. Okay, and then you take this number seven and you put that for the first one. So that's gonna be seven and then you count down. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And then with the other one, which is the, which is the Y, uh, you count upwards. So this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so we're looking for X20 and y, so that's gonna be this, oh no wait, oh yeah, x40, x20 and y2. That's gonna be this one. The reason I say that is that these two numbers multiplied together, that's gonna give us 20, and then these over here, that's gonna give us a two. So it's x20 and y2. So we're just gonna look at this part over here, and so the only coefficient is gonna be 21. So that would be the answer for that one. Here's our last example. So this means we have to go down to row six in Pascal's triangle. So this will be two, three, three, four, six, four, five, ten, ten, five. Okay, so these are the numbers that we are gonna have to use. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. And then what we need to do is we need to go place these parameters over here. So that's gonna be x, negative y, four in brackets, and we're gonna do that for all of them, a little plus in between. Okay, and then what happens is we take this number and we go put that to the first one, like we normally do, so five, four, three, two, one, and zero, and then the other number, or the zero, the negative y, four, we put that as zero, one, two, three, four, 
and 5. Okay, so where would we get x2, y12? Well, here we got an x2, and this y is going to be a 12, because when you multiply those two, that's going to give us 12. Okay, so it's this one that we're looking at. Now be careful. A lot of learners are going to say, oh, the coefficient's 10. But there is a negative 1 over there. Okay, now if you take a negative 1 to the power of 3, that is the same as saying negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. So if you have a negative 1 over here and a 10 over here, then when you multiply them together, you're going to get negative 10, not positive 10. And so that would be our final answer over there.